your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce you to today's guest, I just briefly want to tell you that my third book with Glenn Merzer, Own Your Health, will be out in a few days. If you're on my mailing list, we're going to offer you bonuses like the free Audible book and extra recipes if you buy it the day we say. So if you're not on my mailing list, consider joining so you'll know exactly what days to buy it so you can get the free audio book. Well, today's guests are one of the most requested guests that I've had since March, every day, have them on, have them on. And at first I didn't know them because I don't know everybody. I'm an old person. I don't watch all these young whippersnappers on YouTube, but people are like, you have to have them. So I contacted them and then they got back to me and yay, they are finally here. Their names are Brian and Jessica Kroc and they have a booming YouTube channel with great recipes and an amazing story that you're going to hear in case you're not familiar with them, known as Crocs in the Kitchen. Please welcome the Crocs. Thanks guys for taking the time to do this. Hello. Hi, we're glad to be here. I feel like there should be thunderous applause for like that introduction. That was amazing. <laughs> well, you know, I feel bad because I'm I, I, I'm not I'm a YouTuber, but I'm not a YouTuber. I don't watch a lot of stuff and people are like, have them have I'm like, I don't know them. And then I contacted yeah. you and then you didn't get back to me and then it hurt my feelings. And so I get afraid Aww. to ask, but you did get back to me. And I'm so happy to have you here because you have an amazing story and, and not everybody knows it. So please share it. It's been a little over two years, a little over 300 pounds. That's extraordinary. Ordinary. Yeah. Not very many people can do that. So we'd love to know why you did it, how you did it, and what's going on with you guys yeah. now. Okay, so we started out uh, 2018, June 2018. Brian actually was 514 pounds. Yep. And he's six foot six, just for reference point. So he is a tall guy, but 514 is still, <laughs> for anybody, it's, it's a lot. Um, and I am actually five six, and I started out at 285 pounds. So we we like to say we were 800 pounds combined. Technically, it was like 799, but you know who's counting. Um, and we had been trying to lose weight for years. Uh, we had lost some weight before we got married. We've been married for almost nine years now, um, but we had lost some weight before we got married in different ways, you know, counting calories, but it never, we never found anything that stuck that like, that was a like a true lifestyle change that we could stick to. Um, and so after we got married and went on our honeymoon, we just sort of like never got back on track and never lost weight. And every year it would be like January 1st. Okay. We're going to lose weight again. You know, we're going to, we're going to finally get, get back on track with losing weight. Um, and you know, that would never work out. And so one day in 2018, uh, June, 2018, Brian came home from work and said, Hey, um, I heard about this thing. This guy ate two weeks of nothing but plain potatoes. Do you want to do it? And I said, well, that sounds really stupid. Um, but sure. Why not? And so, yeah, tell him a little bit, I guess. Frozen, you guys frozen, or uh oh, spaghettios. Are they frozen for just me or for you guys too? Oh. Are we back? Are we back? <laughs> I'm so glad you came back because I was waving like a crazy woman because you were frozen. So thanks for coming. We could back. hear you. We could hear you. Can, yeah. And you were can, frozen. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh my God. We were both frozen. Okay. So where did we leave? I'm it was June. Was. Brian heard about a guy that ate yes. nothing but potatoes for okay. two weeks. You thought that was crazy. And yes. Okay. okay. So I thought that was absolutely crazy. So tell them like how yeah. you. Yes. So for the months leading up to that, I'd just been feeling like I needed to change. Uh, I didn't exactly know how heavy I was at that time. Uh, I had a scale. I just didn't step on it. And uh, I just, I don't know. I had this, this sort of overwhelming desire. I was laying there in bed at night and just thinking I'm, I'm really overweight and I've never been able to really kick myself into gear to get anything done. But I also had this thought, if I don't do a change, if I don't significantly change something, then I'm not going to live to see 40. 
and I was uh, what, 36 at the time, about to turn 37. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. And, uh, and so I was like, I just was like, oh no, I need to, I need to do something different. And then a couple months later, uh, I was watching the Joe Rogan podcast and he had on the director, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith uh, had a heart attack and he decided to lose weight. But one of the things that he learned about was from the magician, Penn Gillette, who had the book Presto, where he talks about uh, losing a hundred pounds in three months, really 90 days. And, uh, and so I was like, well, if these two guys who I actually really admire, who are both big, like, well, I mean, Kevin Smith isn't exactly tall, but Penn Gillette is like me, he's like six, seven, and he was like 300 pounds or something like that. And uh, I was like, if those guys can do it, so can I. And then I went home and tried to convince Jessica that this is something we could do. Yeah, so I ended up actually reading the book Presto because he hadn't read it at that point. Mm -hmm. And so I read Penn Gillette's book and I was like, okay, what did he actually do? So he ate potatoes and he gets, he gets confused. A lot of times people think like all he did, he ate potatoes to lose the entire hundred pounds, which obviously is not true if you read the book. And so, um, so we started reading the book and trying to figure out, like he was working with Ray Cronice, who we've actually become friends with now. So it's, it's come full circle for us and it's kind of crazy. Uh, but he, he, Ray Cronice was basically like helping Penn Jillette lose weight. And so we were just trying to figure out like, what did they do? What did, what's the secret? Um, and the closest that we really got to it was figuring out after he ate two weeks of plain potatoes, um, which we ended up doing as well, he switched to a plant-based diet, specifically a whole food plant-based diet. And so um, he, the closest thing that we could find to what, to what, what, uh, they were doing was eat to live by Dr. Joel Furman. And so we picked up that book and I read that. I actually read that while we were eating our two weeks of plain potatoes, um, which was two weeks of just absolute, like, yeah, we have a, our very first video we posted. We actually show what happened during those two weeks. I don't ever recommend to anybody to do that. It was horrible. They were completely plain. There was nothing added, no salt, no nothing. People are always like, did you add salt? Did you add nothing? Um, and so, uh, so then we just kind of from there started on this whole food plant-based path. Um, we actually really in the beginning stuck pretty strictly to the six week plan from eat to live, um, which basically gives you three categories, you know, one category. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people on here are familiar, but one category of, of things that are unlimited, another like section of stuff that you can't have at all. And then some stuff that you can have kind of more sparingly. And so we stuck to that plan. Uh, and then over the last two years, we've just kind of modified it to fit, you know, we just, we just eat a whole food plant-based diet and that's how we've lost. Um, I've lost just over hundred pounds and Brian's lost 200 pounds. Um, and so, and we're still losing weight now. Yeah. And, uh, and we decided to create a YouTube channel to share all of our recipes and all kinds of stuff on there. And our so, lives. And our lives. Yes. So we, we do videos all the time. Um, Brian creates a lot of recipes. We, we talk a lot. We do funny, goofy stuff and little challenges and all kinds of stuff. And just, our goal is just to show that this is a lifestyle that is fun and you can, you know, you can switch to it and, I think a lot of people are hesitant to change their lifestyle because they think they're losing something, but we show on the, on our YouTube channel, we show that there's so much more that you can gain from doing this. You know, there's just, there's so many new foods you can try and all kinds of stuff. And that's, that's kind of our, our goal now. So. Absolutely. Uh, hold on. It's, it's, we can't hear you. Hold on. Uh, you know why you can't hear okay. me? Because I had <laughs> it. I, was gonna I, was, say. I was freaking out there. I was like, oh no, another technical difficulty. When I like to sometimes mute it when my guests talk, just so, you know, so you don't hear oh, my yeah, background yeah. noise. No, so I, I that's it. funny. I was saying you're such an inspiration to people, a lot of fans on that love you and thank you for what you're doing. I'm curious to know if either of you were overweight growing up, has this been a lifelong struggle? Yeah. I mean, I was overweight my entire life. Um, I, right before we got married, I had gotten down to kind of around where I am at now, um, which that was like the lowest I'd been since probably like middle school, you know, since I was a kid. Um, so for me, I've definitely struggled ever since I was a kid. I've struggled with my weight. I started gaining weight one summer uh, when we got Nintendo and Pepsi went on sale and was dirt cheap for like a 24 pack. And so my 
parents just bought a bunch of soda and we played Nintendo all summer long. And that's when I started gaining my weight. Uh, and so I honestly don't know, like for me, every pound lost now, every new step down on the scale is my new lowest point in my adult life. So, you know, every, every pound is an adventure for me. That's pretty exciting, actually, when you think of it like that. It's amazing that so a lot of those calories just came from liquids. Yeah, especially in the early days. And then after a while, actually, many years ago, I gave up, I gave up sugar, like, uh, at least, at least in, in liquid form. Uh, I gave up, you know, drinking sodas that had sugar or, you know, getting a lot of, of fruit juices or anything like that. I completely stopped all that stuff. And I still kept gaining weight because I was still just eating a lot of other processed foods, a lot of fatty foods, you know, massive amounts of oil and, uh, and animal products and stuff like that. And so, yeah, for me though, like it started out with the sugary drinks and then sort of evolved into the fatty stuff mixed with carbs and all of that kind of bad stuff that you're not supposed to do. Well, I think what's so cool is this time when you lost weight, you actually got to eat a lot of food. Oh, yeah. 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 Brian definitely likes to eat a large quantity of food. And so this was back in the days where we used to calorie count. You know, it just it wasn't we were just we were still eating the same stuff, but just restricting it to these small amounts. And so it just it didn't it didn't it didn't we didn't change anything fundamentally. And then, you know, over time, we would go back to eating more and more of it and and just gain weight back. And so this time it's a complete you know, shift of, of what we've eaten. And we like to call originally when we started, we were kind of, we didn't know if this was going to be something that we would start doing. And then, you know, we'd lose the weight and then we'd go back to the old way of eating, but it only took a few months of doing this to realize that this is what we want. This is how we want to eat for the rest of our lives. And this is what we want to do. And so, um, we started out calling this our weight loss journey, but we now call it our weight loss adventure because it's just like, you know, an ongoing adventure that, that, that will keep going throughout our lives. But of course, hopefully we'll be done with the weight loss portion of it in the next six months to a year. <laughs> well, Gina says your transformation is amazing. Maya says first time learning about the Crocs, but I can tell I will enjoy watching their videos. <laughs> Congratulations on your weight loss. And Jude says, love the Crocs. They're so real and transparent and they come up with awesome recipes, which they are going to do today after we get to know them a little bit better. I'm curious, did either of you ever hear of a vegan diet or a whole food plant-based diet before hearing about Dr. Furman's book? So uh, for me, I, I had never heard of, and I know you hadn't, we've never heard of a whole food plant-based diet mm -hmm. whatsoever. Uh, we obviously had heard of a vegan diet because we you know, I mean, we exist in this world and vegans are there. And, yeah. but for the most part, I mean, we're, we're Midwestern people. And so the concept of a vegan is kind of foreign to us. Yeah. You know? I mean, I knew I had a few friends that had, you know, that ate a vegan diet and stuff like that. But to me, it was always one of those things that I thought would be a really good thing to do because there's a lot of stuff that goes on that I don't, you know, that I disagree with as far as animal products and stuff like that. And so I always thought like, wow, those people the, the fact that they've been able to commit to that just because of, you know, animal rights and all that kind of stuff. It like, I admire that so much, but it's, it's not one of those things that I could bring myself to do until we learned about, you know, the whole food plant-based diet and that how much better it was for our health. Um, but honestly, even when we started, a lot of people ask us like, why'd you pick this plan? Why'd you do this? Why'd you, you know, whatever we were just trying to figure out what the heck, you know, Ray Cronice had Pendulette doing. And so we were like, what did they do? What did they do? And eat to live was what we came to. And so we didn't know about, you know, we didn't even know about the other doctors or yeah. any of the other, we didn't know anything. The only information we had on the whole food plant-based diet was eat to live. And so, um, that was our introduction. And it's been really cool doing the YouTube channel because we've gotten, you know, we have all these people we interact with now who do different variations of a whole food plant-based diet and we've been able to learn and check out you know some of the other doctors and all that stuff and so it's just con we're constantly learning more about this and that keeps it fun as well i think absolutely that's so cool you know when you think about that you got tired of potatoes after two weeks can you imagine spud fit who did it for 50 yeah. weeks? i'm yeah. friends with them on facebook so yeah, yeah we, it, we've had some conversations about that it, I can't even imagine. I mean, his were not completely like completely plain. That's true. He, he did add some stuff to him, which 
uh, and trust me, even just having like ketchup would like yeah. anything you could add to them. Like when you're trying to do it plain, it is just it's brutal. When, when we did a uh, uh, the uh, Mary's mini from from McDougal, uh, I like the first day of it. Like when I got done with it, I was like, this is this was easy. This was yeah. simple and just so easy compared to eating two weeks of plain potatoes. Mm -hmm. It's like because you know you could actually add stuff to them. And like even after the first ten days or whatever that we did of it, I was I, we got done and I was like that was that was really really easy. Yeah. So it was it was it, Mary's mini compared to plain was definitely like a cakewalk. <laughs> it's like it's if, very you, if you climb Everest, you know, then it's like oh I'm I, I'm now going to climb this this nice hill. It's like there's no comparison. It's like we did something really hard on our end, you know, with with that, and then it's like doing the mini was was super easy after that. Well, it's like everything is relative. And that's why I like people that water fast, it's it, you have a whole different frame of reference now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, I've never done that one yet. I haven't done I haven't done water fasting yet. Me neither. I haven't even done all potatoes yet. <laughs> speaking of potatoes, our potatoes, we actually the recipe we're going to make our potatoes are are we have two minutes and 39 seconds until it's going to start beeping. So we're going to take the potatoes out of the oven because uh, we went ahead and got them going. Otherwise, they would never have finished during this video. But so when you see Brian disappear, that's why. <laughs> okay, that's great. So, but you guys are like, you're regular people. Like you have regular jobs and everything like that, right? Yes. So I actually right now don't have a job. Technically I'm on furlough. I actually work in the music industry promoting concerts. So right now is not a good time for my industry. Um, it's, it's really unfortunate. There's a lot of people out of work and um, it's been I, I'm lucky that I have this whole Crocs in the kitchen thing that we do because um, I do all the stuff with our website. So he does all the video editing and stuff like that, but I do all our social media and website stuff. And so that keeps me really, really busy, um, you know, taking pictures of recipes and doing all the blog posts and all that. It, it keeps me really busy. And um, if I didn't have that right now, I would be just like going crazy. Um, but Brian's actually a podcast uh, producer. producer. Yes, I work for a podcasting network. Uh, and I, I literally even today, like I was just putting together podcasts, getting them posted online and whatnot. And, uh, and I do a bunch of stuff there. I do like voiceover work as well. And, uh, and all that, but uh, on my podcast though, I would love to extend an invitation to you mm -hmm. to be on my podcast. Well, I'd love I, to give I, you an interview. I would love to. And thank you. And it's funny. I did not know that about you, Brian, but this whole time I'm thinking this guy has a great voice. So I'm glad <laughs> thank you, have you. Right. You guys seem so comfortable, you know, in front of the camera, I teach some business classes and so many people are afraid to get started on YouTube, but you guys just seem very comfortable. Well, Jessica was definitely a bit leery of, of getting online and presenting herself to people. Me, I've always been up on stage. I've been a musician pretty much my entire life. Uh, I, I loved doing things in theater and stuff like that. I know you were a comedian uh, and I've, I've actually I've seen your videos of, of you doing stuff online and, and uh, that was awesome. So it's like, but yeah, it's like I basically grew up in front of other people. So transitioning to a camera was was fairly simple for me not to mention yeah. i really love interacting with people for, so. for me i'm a total introvert i'm actually and people on the channel don't believe me when i tell them like i am actually painfully shy um and so and because i talk a lot they're like wait you're shy uh but it's, it's different. I've gotten really comfortable doing this. And, um, I think part of that is just because we've gotten to know people. We've gotten to know a lot of the people that we, we interact with and that, that watch our channel. And so you, you realize like, Hey, there are just people out there watching too, but, um, there's the potatoes. Uh, but, but it, if you watch our earlier videos, you'll definitely notice that I'm way more comfortable now than I was in the beginning. And I'm, telling well you may not even notice because there were a lot more takes that happened back then when we first started it was it was painful for brian because he had to he had to uh do a lot of editing to make my stuff work <laughs> I, I did watch as many videos as i could before today's broadcast and i love this one where brian ate corn for the first time yeah the very <laughs> that was our very first video that we did talking about the two weeks of potatoes and uh, yeah, that first bite of corn was was heaven. And it was kind of a game changer for me because it really was that moment of like, OK, this is what something can actually taste like as opposed to what I think it tastes like. Yeah. So that was right after. Obviously, like it wasn't the first time we'd ever had corn. It was after we'd done the two weeks of potatoes. 
the the whole thing was the first bite was going to be this corn and it was going to be like so sweet and you were and we really could after we did the two weeks of plain potatoes we really could taste i mean i was eating baby carrots like they were candy like you could take after the years of like just eating all that junk food and just i don't know it 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 just it's amazing how much just real food tastes good to you after you take away all the junk um, and so that's been really cool finding like new foods that we love and fruits that, and things that I didn't like before. And now that I do like, um, like I would never eat like an orange or a strawberry before, which sounds just totally insane to me now because I would just eat them, you know, nonstop now. Um, but yeah, there's so many things that we've tried that we love now. Yeah. Well, what you, I just typed what you said, real food tastes good when you take away all the junk. That's kind yeah. of the secret. Uh, yeah, that it is. And it's funny because when we first started this, somebody who I work with said to me, um, she said, so when are you going to be able to eat real food again? And I was like, what do you mean like real food? And she said, you know, like pizza. <laughs> and I was like, what? It just blows my mind because it's like, I eat more real food now than I've ever eaten in my life. And, um, but it's hard for people to understand, like they think it's so restrictive. Uh, when you start telling them, well, I don't eat oil, I don't add sugar, I don't add salt, you know, you start telling them that kind of stuff and they think it's so restrictive, but it's, it's just so hard to explain to people that I eat so much more variety now than I ever ate before. And like hands down, I'm so much more adventurous with what I eat and when we travel and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I agree completely. One hour percent. Jesse says, please tell Jessica and Brian that all their favorite crock pots are here watching them today and say hello Aww, to Peef. Hi. Yes, Peef is, Peef is back there. There's Peef. Grab Peef. I will grab the Peef. Peef is my bear. He, there is a whole video about Peef. If you look on our channel, it's a, it's a very lengthy, crazy explanation. But Peef has been, Peef travels when I love to travel and I take Peef and I take pictures of him with everything. And he's actually in the background of every single video we make. There are some where he's really well hidden and you can't find him, but it started out kind of as a joke and we just like, we can't, now we just have to have him in every video. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to have him in one video starting <laughs> in the very beginning and then it turned into a bit and it's just stuck with us ever since. And yes. now people, we like run into uh, our viewers out in the world and stuff. <laughs> and they're just like, she whips out Peef and they're just like, oh my God, Peef. Cause whenever we run, we're always traveling whenever we've run into people. I've, well, I've run into a couple of people in St. Louis, but cause we live in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, but usually we're traveling when we run into people. And so I always have Peef with me and everyone, and people like take selfies with Peef and it's yep. just, it's, that's like hilarious. Yes, he's our he's our little little mascot. So, well, so you guys obviously inspire thousands and thousands of people with, with your YouTube channel. But what about friends, family, and coworker? I mean, they've had to have noticed your transformation, right? Uh, for my coworkers, the only real thing that I ever got got them to do was. Uh, because a couple of them wanted to lose weight. And so they tried to do the two weeks of potatoes and none of them succeeded. And then they just did other things uh, to try and lose weight. One of them like went on a keto diet. Another one actually got gastric, uh, the gastric sleeve surgery and stuff. Uh, I actually, I had that, that guy on my show actually uh, a couple months ago. And, uh, and so coworker wise, nobody ever really did anything, but everybody is really appreciative and, and excited to see like how I, I've lost all the weight and uh and a couple of them have have even tried out recipes and they love them and stuff so so that's really cool family wise uh the most that i've gotten out of that is i is my dad is is eating oatmeal for breakfast as far as i know <laughs> but. yeah for me um i don't think there's anybody like coworkers, like really close friends or anybody who's like made a total switch um they all like i don't know our, i feel like whenever we're with my family like we always bring like our giant salad bowls with us to like family gatherings and because people ask us a lot of times like well, what do you do when you're you know in a family setting or that kind of stuff and they just they don't nobody has given us i hear a lot of people say like oh my family gives us so much trouble like they you know other people like make fun of them or any kind of just just give them trouble and like oh well, what are you eating you know kind of thing um, and I never really experienced that. And, but we never try to like 
preach on other people like, oh, you have to do this. You have to do this. And um, one of the reasons we started the channel was because we do get so many questions from people that we know. And so when we first started the YouTube channel, it was just, we were just like, okay, well, we'll put up a couple of videos on what we did because we just get asked about it so many times. Um, and so then it just kind of took on a life of its own and, and here we are today. <laughs> yep. Do you think the fact that you did it together made it easier and more is gonna make it more sustainable this time losing weight? For us, yes. Uh, yeah. Doing it, doing it together definitely helped out because when we we succeed together, we fail together. If we if we've struggled on the diet, of which you know we've done videos uh, on different things every you know whenever we've gotten off plan or something like that, uh, and those those are us failing at the same time. But then at the same time, after that. Uh, or, you know, even before it's, we're always trying to build each other back up to that point to, to be back and eating the right way and doing all that. But yes. So for us, we work together as a team. It's just the way that we've kind of always been. We are polar opposites in personality and in skill sets and everything across the board, really, except for our love of music. Uh, and yet, we work together extremely well and that has really, really helped us out. So yeah. I know a lot of people deal with it by themselves. They're the, you know, the solo person in, in the household who eats that way or something. And we get a lot of questions asking, asking us about that. And I feel bad because we just really don't have an answer for them other than here's what we did to, to lose weight, but you're, you may have to adapt some things to uh, adjust to having a partner or a family that doesn't eat the way that you do. Yeah. I usually am the one who gets him off, tr off the, I sometimes will get him off the rails. Like I, if I, I have to be on, otherwise he's like, you know, he's easily, I'm easy to knock over. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's like a competition for me almost sometimes. You know, it's like, so like she ate something bad. It's like she ate something bad. So now I have to eat something bad to, to keep up with her. Uh, some, still, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cooking those yeah I'm cooking the potatoes. They're cooking. They had to cook a little bit yes. longer because okay. you were right. Yes. I cut them a little too big. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's that. I, I was right. She Brian was right. Crock. I was, uh, Jessica was right. You guys but, should uh, actually have a sitcom. You guys are hilarious. So that's funny. So Jessica, you're, you're, you're the enabler then, huh? Yeah, I'm, I can be pretty bad. And people in the, it's funny because people on our videos in the comments will get mad. They'll be like, like stop stop sabotaging brian because <laughs> i'm the bad influence but here's the thing he could he, i could say no he could say no and that's the thing it's been interesting because um we've had the last few months have been like kind of a roller coaster emotionally for me and so it's just it's just i don't know it's there's a lot of stuff going on and you know everything with my job and all that but um but yeah it's it i kind of um if I want, if I'm to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna eat and I hate calling it bad, but like off plan or whatever. Um, it's like, I have one, I have two routes. I could hide it from him and then he'll stay on track, but then I'm like sneaking around, you know, or I could tell him about it, but then I know he'll want to do it too. And so then I feel like I'm sabotaging him. So it's like, do I be honest or do, and like, you know, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a hard thing, but usually I'm not a very good liar. So, that's true. Um, so usually I end up confessing to anything that I've done and I'm like, this is what and I did. It, it isn't always that I get off track because of her, uh, you know, it, that does generally seem to happen that way. But <laughs> at the same time, I have said no. I have, she's been like, well, I did this. And I was just like, well, I'm eating, I'm eating right today, you know, yeah. and like all of that. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, there've been other times when I told her be like, well, you know, I was at, I was at work and you know, they ordered food. And so I ate mm -hmm. something, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I think for, for us though, there's a lot of the, like when, when we're on plan, like we're on plan and it's, it's, kind of hard to knock us off of that yeah and then it usually takes some sort of an outside influence be it anxiety depression or or something like that uh, to generally like get us sort of off kilter but I mean it does happen life happens and sometimes it really does mess you up and and I know for for Jessica though like a lot of it with her like when she has eaten off plan it isn't isn't the food necessarily that that she's she's you know like driving to get to it's the comfort it's the mm -hmm. the thing the thing that reminds her of a better time and you know that kind of kind of a setup and so it's like it's but it, it's funny yeah. though because lately i've realized that i can get like 
it, when I need that comfort, like there's so much you, I mean, if you're sticking to like the plan that we normally stick to, to try to lose weight, that's one thing, but there's actually, you know, like the more indulgent kind of versions of that stuff can still give you that comfort. You really don't need to go outside of plant-based, you know, like even whole food plant-based you can get, I mean, you, there's, there's more indulgent ways to do it than, and so you can still kind of stick on that. So that's kind of where I've, I've gotten a lot better over the years about, or over the last two years about that and not wanting to completely go off on in a com- totally different direction. But yeah, it's, it, we, we always say we're not perfect. It's a work in progress, but we're in this for the long haul. Like this is, this is, we know this is the right path for us. Yep. That's great. I don't think it matters so much if you get off track as long as you get back on. Yes. Yep, Brian exactly. loves to say that. It's like, cause I like to call myself a failure. My therapist is working on me with that. Um, <laughs> I'm very hard on myself. I'm a perfectionist and I'm very, I'm my own worst critic. And I've been that way since I was a kid. It's all like self-motivated and self-imposed just, and he's the total opposite. Like, I prefer to quote, uh, quote uh, Rocky. It's, it's not about how hard uh, you can hit is about hard, how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Yeah. It's it, that's sort of the mentality of it is like, it doesn't matter. You know, you get, what's the, what's the, the old adage, uh, get knocked down five times, get up six, you know, whatever it have, get down <laughs> that kind of, kind of mentality. Yeah. And yeah, for me, like, uh, I've even said it before that, uh, for in this lifestyle, my my end goal is not a weight. My end goal is not a number. It's it's not something on a scale. My end goal is a life well lived and lived for a long time. And so for me, I and I tell this to people all the time, like the finish line isn't a number. The finish line is death. And hopefully that death is far away. So nice. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> you know, I, I think women are a little harder on themselves with this, Jessica, that, that, that when, you know, because men, it seems like they can have a, a, you know, a transgression, a beer or something, and they, they don't beat themselves up the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I've always, I, everything that I've ever done in my life, like I've always been my own worst critic. And so are you okay over there, Brian? Yeah, I'm just really, really wrapped up. He's got up. his microphone like wrapped around the oh, chair how that even while he's trying to get these potatoes out. Um, but it's, I've had to learn to kind of let go of some of that and realize that, you know, as long as I don't give up, then I haven't failed. And that's a thing that's hard. That's been hard for me to, to kind of not dwell on the times when I've done stuff that, you know, has been off plan, but like just trying to realize, Hey, as long as I don't give up and completely like abandon ship on this whole thing, then I'm still doing okay. And there's still another day ahead. Well, you can't fail if you don't quit. I mean, that's right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes. Martha says, if someone is considering a plant-based lifestyle, what one recipe should they try from the quok, quoks, the crocs and people, the quoks, <laughs> the quoks, the, that's a different couple. The, they're saying uh, you have a chili with oat groats. Some people are saying might be one. Yeah, we actually just put out a, a chili recipe. Uh, what was that? Wednesday? Wednesday. Uh, that Brian just came out with. But I would say um, our, our original chili recipe, which is a little bit more like, I guess, like hearty kind of, I don't know. I, I have had people send me messages and it always makes me happy when they're like, uh, my meat eating carnivore of a husband ate your chili and was absolutely floored at how good it was. And so I'm like, yeah, that's what I want. I want those guys to be just like, man, this is a good chili. I don't want these people to be like, uh, you know, oh, this is a good vegan chili. Cause that, that's a whole other category for me. It's like, but, but for me, it's, it's all about getting those people that don't know the lifestyle to try the food and then be like, yes, this is awesome. I love this. Yeah. So that's our original chili recipe that came out like about a year ago. And then the one that we just did is just a little bit different. It's my favorite recipe that Brian's ever made. So yeah, the, the, has, new, the new one, but I was cocoa powder and oat groats. in it. I would still say if you're new to this and you want a really good recipe to try out, we ate that chili. I, we made that chili like probably every other week the it makes a massive batch you can freeze it like honestly we owe like so much of our weight loss to that chili it's kind of ridiculous we, we even <laughs> coined the phrase emergency chili yes emergency uh, chili <laughs> for whenever we would go on vacation and we would come back we would have food ready to go in the freezer and usually that food was chili so we call it emergency chili 
just in case you ever happen to, you know, be hungry. Yeah, because when you when something. you know that you're gonna travel and be off like for a little bit, not that now that really matters because nobody's traveling, but it it's we we always we always found that having that plan in place for when you get home so you don't come home to like an empty refrigerator. So that really helped us because we used to do a lot of traveling and that really helped keep us on when we knew we came home to our emergency chili in the freezer and it was ready to go. We didn't have to think about what we were going to eat. I think that's the number one most important thing is being prepared. I really do. Yes. Being prepared. That's why we love, we love doing the batch cooking. Um, you just, and we love doing like veggie prep once a week where we'll just prep a bunch of veggies so that when we were working, cause we used to work and get home late, you know, like seven o'clock at night and we just needed to eat dinner. And it was like, it, we couldn't be bothered to chop things and do all that. So we always had everything prepped and ready to go because you, if you don't have it prepped, then in the moment where you're making that decision, you're going to, you have a decision to make. If you already have it prepped, you, you don't have a decision. It's like, Oh, there's my food. There we called is. it our salad bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we would chop up all the veggies that we were going to use throughout the week. And then we would have everything available and we would either have, you know, heads of lettuce or bagged lettuce or whatever it happened to be. Sometimes we get mixes or whatever. Yeah. And then we get home, open that up, chop up a head of lettuce, throw in everything else, put on one of the, uh, the SOS free dressings that we created or uh, our hummus recipe, our super smoky hummus recipe is, is another popular one that we have. Uh, put that on there, mix it all up, bang. You got, you got yourself a, a nice, nice uh, salad for dinner. You know what they say, preparation trumps motivation. I just want to thank a couple of people for Super Chats. You guys are getting me, bringing me luck today. Thank you, Jeremy Moore. Thank you, Martha. I can't ring it too much. It drives my dog crazy. <laughs> I know what Martha that is. That's We know that, Martha. Is that Martha? It's got to be Martha. It's got to be the Martha. It's got to be Martha. Um, let's see if it's, it says Martha S. Yep, yep that's, that's, Mar that's Martha. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, people are saying Brian's chorizo spiced beans recipe is fabulous. Yes, it is. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That is the best smelling thing I have ever made. You guys going to write a book, I imagine, someday. Uh, I would love to. That is definitely on my my list of things to do. Uh, especially, I'm I'm hoping maybe next year uh, would be super nice to get that done. But um, maybe 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 have something a little bit sooner than that too. You yeah, know, we, we're up. working on a few things, so we're hoping maybe we can have some kind of recipe, not a book, but like something coming out this year, maybe. But we'll see. Well, it it's really about me getting motivated because. I'm in this, I've never not had a full-time job, like since the day I graduated college, like 13 or whatever, 12 years ago. And so this is a weird time for me and I have all this free time to work on stuff, but, um, but it's, it's the motivation can be kind of lacking when you're like, oh, I finally have a break. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. Well, I know what you mean about motivation. That's a lot of times people's problems when it comes to weight loss, motivation. Yep, definitely a hundred percent. And we, you know, it's, it's funny because it, I don't know it, something changed in Brian at the beginning half of, of 2018, I could see that there was a change in his mind and that he really started to worry about the future. And, and that was his motivation was to live so that we could have a longer life together. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people get hung up in, you know, well, am I worth it? Am I, you know, they, they get depressed, they get all kinds of different things going on. So um, it's really important to have, you know, to know what your reason are for what your reason is for doing this so that when you want to give up, you can say, okay, I can't give up because of this or, yeah. you know, I found my why. I knew what I wanted to do. I found my why to do it. Well, people liked your saying a life, you want to have a life well lived. Yeah, that is absolutely true. It could almost be the title of the book or the <laughs> Hey, so you got me another one. Fooly yeah. Julie, you guys are great. Uh, you got to stay on well, for a Of course, hours. Julie. Oh, Fooly Julie, She's, so that's Martha's sister. So yeah. yes, they're, <laughs> they're, twin, they're twins. Uh, oh, yeah, they, we, we love them. They have been, and that's the cool part about doing this is like we have, have uh, gain so many friends all over the world. And, um, we, it, it's been just, I mean, we have lifelong friends that we've gained from doing this. Uh, we're really good friends with Brittany Giroudi. I know you had her on, yes. uh, she's just 
lovely. And then we actually just recently became friends with Jill from the Whole Food Plant Based Cooking Show. Um, and so I'm kind of a person who doesn't have a lot, like I my entire life I've avoided having friends because I've just been like hurt too many times and like I have a fragile like I don't know um but this has given me an opportunity to kind of find people that you know it's hard to find people that really get to know you and I feel like I'm actually most I'm actually more me on the channel than I am in real life sometimes because I put up these walls in real life to kind of avoid getting hurt and when it comes to the channel I'm just like really open and so it's interesting because people who watch the videos who know me really well will learn stuff about me that they had no idea and they thought I was like one way and they're like wow I learned you know I did a, an, a video talking about my anxiety which was like a really really personal one for me um and it's stuff that I don't normally share with you know people in my lives and so it's it's been an interesting way to have these people who come to you knowing like the real you without the walls up and 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 really connecting with these people on another level through the channel um has been honestly one of the most rewarding parts of it all yeah absolutely that's so cool do you get any not so great people watching you like you know what i'm talking about um yeah i mean yes. there's definitely some interesting comments in the beginning I remember one comment that I, we were in a hotel when it came through and it was one of our first like really mean comments and I was in tears. Um, but I've, and I take things really personally. Brian can like let stuff I, roll off of him. <laughs> I, uh, I really weirdly enough like the trolls that interact with me. Uh, because I, I like arguing with them for some reason. I don't know. I'm old. I've been around, you know, since the internet was formed. I've been in chat rooms my entire life. Like I'm used to just like arguing with people online about random things. I definitely so, have to like tell Brian, I'm like, don't respond to that one. Like, and I have to like put, let him not, I have to control him a little bit sometimes. I'm, but, I'm a lot better about it now than, than I originally wanted to be when we first started out. The thing that we've learned, I think, is that a lot of times when people comment, you know, you, like, I love to say like, kill them with kindness, but they don't expect you to like, because sometimes they have a point, you know, some of the things that they say, they may have a point. Does that mean they needed to make that point? You know, we pour our heart and soul into doing this and like so much time into making the videos and stuff like that. And so it can get a little bit annoying when you read, you know, negative comment and they may have a point. If, I find that if you acknowledge it and say, hey, you know, this is, you know, thanks for bringing it up. You know, you just kind of you know, you want to be the bigger person sometimes. And so, um, I find a lot of times then they come back and you can, you know, they, they're like, Oh, Hey, wow. There is a real person at the end of this. When they, people don't think like there's another person on the end of, 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 of stuff. But one of the coolest things has just been over time for me, like the negative comments just don't get to me anymore. And there's a lot of power in that um in knowing that i can handle the negativity and not let it bother me that i have control of that and before when we first started it was like i was just you know <laughs> i was yeah. it was really bad whenever we'd get anything negative so now it's kind of gotten to a place where i i'm okay with it other people's opinions of you do not define you and i say that to a lot of people uh you you are only defined by yourself and God. So, you know, leave it at that. I love Brian's, in, uh, like little, his little, he, lo he, he has his, he always has his little quotes that he, that he, in his little, my things, words that I live his by. words of wisdom. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why, so he, he works for a podcasting network. So he started his own podcast. It's called I'm losing it. And, um, it's all about, we interview different people, um, in this community he talks Even about outside the community there's stuff it's it's not all about weight loss but there's all kinds of different stuff on there that's always an underlying thing. um and one of the reasons i really wanted him to start the podcast was because he does have this 
just like wisdom. And he's always kept me grounded because I am the anxiety, the, 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 you know, running around, like worried about everything. And he keeps me really calm and grounded. And so I love for him to be able to share those words with, you know, to an open mic in a, in a format other than just our, our YouTube videos. Um, and his, his, uh, his podcast has, has allowed him to do that. Although I did take over your podcast. Um, this for a good this cause, week, this for a good cause. <laughs> we get a lot of flack sometimes from people because people say that originally people said that I interrupted him too much when we were talking. And then and it's it's a weird balance. Like we both have a lot to say and I my head goes like a mile a minute. And um, so I made a conscious effort not to interrupt him. And then people started telling him he was interrupting me. <laughs> So, so it's, it's, it's funny doing this together because we're just two goofy people who are, we're just a married couple. Like we, we get a lot, like we're married. Like you guys, like if you've been married for almost 10 years, like, you know, you interrupt each other, you, you know, that's just who, we, that's just what it is. It's not disrespectful or meant that way, but, but that gets talked all about a lot in the comments. So it, it's kind of funny. Yeah. That's why you guys, I think that's what's great about you guys. So many people are asking about a band. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> you mean the Sprouts band? Yes. yes. So so <laughs> the joke started out that, uh, who was it? It was, it was us on a live stream, and it, Nutmeg <laughs> Notebook was on there, and uh, we found out that apparently Tom on, on the, of the Nutmeg Notebook, like, he plays, he plays, he plays a couple different drum. instruments. Yeah, he plays a few instruments. And then, and then Dylan from Well Your World was on, and he plays saxophone. Yes, he and plays so, a mean saxophone. He's a good, he actually does play a good saxophone. <laughs> uh, but then people were, uh, we were just like, hey, like, yeah, the three of us should start a band together. Yeah, Brian's a drummer, and he also sings. He actually has a music YouTube channel as well. Um, and so he, he does all his music stuff over there, but me and Reeves, uh, Dylan's girlfriend, Reeves decided that the band would be called the Sprouts. Oh, well, I think the YouTube commenters might've like come up with the name, but yeah, it might have been, yeah, we're, remember. we're the managers of the band, but we recently discovered that Jill and Jeff for the, from the whole food plant-based cooking show play music. So I'm trying to make there, this we, happen. We, we've recruited <laughs> them as well. And they're now. You know, I, it's all to me. It's all a joke. It's never actually going to happen. Oh, it's gonna happen. We're never going to play together. It's just, it's, oh, it's just not happen. in the cards. Never and say so, never. I, I, you know, one I, day, I, play, I don't know if you guys know, I play the nose flute. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, that's got to be in the band. So, I'm telling you, one I mean, day on a Vegas stage, this band is happening. Yeah, I'd love to do a massive like YouTube whole food plant based meetup. And, uh, and and just have, have a and great a it, headline, and, obviously. And, and like that would just be hilarious to me, though. Like yes, but yes. I'd love to. I'd love to do a meetup in Vegas sometime with with a bunch of different people, just because I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in Vegas as well. So you watch well. out. I'm gonna start like social media accounts for the Sprouts. I don't like... even gamble. I don't even gamble or anything. It's like uh, it's like I still just like going to Vegas because yeah. it's a fun town. Well, maybe one day this pandemic will end and this will be yes. possible. So do you want to do the recipe? I don't want, I, I yes. know yeah. that I, I, I would let's, love to see what you've got. Let's do the recipe. We can put it together really quickly. So this recipe, Brian had been wanting to make pesto and yes. he, he's like, I can make pesto with peas. And I was like, all right, well. I read somewhere that you could make pesto with, with peas. And, and so, so yeah. he, he decided to do this. And so um, what we have done, so then we had some potatoes on hand, uh, when he was making yeah. this and we shall decided, I, shall I explain this one? We decided to put the, or you decided to put the pesto on the potatoes. I was hungry and it was lunchtime and I decided that I was going to make pesto. And then I was like, well, what can I put it on? I've, I mean, we've got some pasta, like some, some bean pasta or stuff in there. I was like, I really don't want to make, make, make pasta. It's like, I want to do something faster than that. We had a bag of potatoes and I was just like, yeah, I'll go ahead and roast some potatoes and then uh, make the pesto and then see how it all turns out. So we have a potato. So we really, for, for the recipe, right, which- Hold it very still. Oh gosh. I'm kidding. This is a very I'm sharp knife, I'm not allowed to use knives. Uh, the recipe is on our website and it's crocsinthekitchen.com. I also sent you the link, so I'm sure you can add it directly to the recipe. I actually just posted it like 10 minutes before we started this video. I took all yep. the fancy pictures and everything. Um, not used to cutting it like eye level. Yeah. This is so kind of terrifying. Basically, you just chop it up. It's supposed to be in like one inch cubes, although Brian's back there are a little bit bigger than that. But, you know, just roughly chop it up into cubes. That's uh, I just quartered it. Uh, those I didn't quarter. They were bigger, but 
just quartered it and then chopped it into nice little bits like this. And then, uh, and then with the magic of, of no, then actually give me that, show me that pan real quick. You have all this prepped and ready to go. So we actually use a, we like to use a Silpat baking mat um, and we just put it on like a baking sheet like this and then put the potatoes on there. I'm actually just gonna schlep these away. And then with the magic of, of TV, uh, at 400 degrees in the oven, these, uh, these I cooked for probably about 55 total. Yeah, it's supposed to be but, 45 minutes if he cut them properly, but he cut them too big. Um, they you, you can air fry these as well, uh, but I find that cooking them in the oven turns them out way, way, way better. But uh, so you can, I don't know if the pan is still hot or not. It's so. not really. All right, cool. I mean, um, so these are just base. These are plain. There's nothing on nothing them. Nothing on them whatsoever. No seasoning. They taste pretty good, actually. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they <laughs> are potatoes. They're better than the plain potatoes we ate. We should have eaten them like this. Yes. So we have our potatoes ready to go, and now all we need to do is make the pesto. Make the pesto. Okay, hold on. The food processor is like. Oh, that's a beautiful food processor. Put them. My mom gave me this as a wedding. I think my mom gave it to me. I don't know. She's probably on there somewhere on the live stream uh, What's her chat. Name? I'll look for her. Her name is Pamela Sneed, but I'm not sure if she was able to figure it out because she's technologically not very inclined. But I did. I sent her the the link, so hopefully she's on. But I think she gave me this. I'm not sure. You want uh, this? for a wedding present? So yes. So basically, we're just gonna add in the food processor. We have, Brian has toasted up some pine nuts. You want to show them the pine nuts? Ooh, look at it. Pine nuts. Um, so we're going to add some pine nuts. And you don't have to do the pine nuts. You could leave them out. Yes. But, um, uh, the only thing, like, if you, uh, I know if you do pine nuts, uh, you, you generally will heat up a pan and then, uh, and then you, you toss them constantly in the pan while it's hot and then remove them the second you can so they can cool because if they burn they become very bitter you can't use them you have to start over again and they will burn like that they will burn I included very, that very note quickly. in the recipe you can print the recipe out from our website and it literally says be careful not to burn them i'm gonna go ahead and add these in there. <laughs> um then i'm gonna add some peas and we just used frozen peas that have been thawed out so really convenient so a if you've got like English peas or something like that, you know, you may have to cook them for a minute if they're fresh. And so. all, all the ingredient amounts are on the website and all that stuff. So, okay, then we need the basil. So you get the basil prepared and then I will get the rest of the stuff in here. We've got some garlic cloves. So we're just gonna, we didn't even chop them up. We're just gonna throw in some garlic cloves. Uh, we've got some lemon juice. We, uh, <laughs> tamari, I have everything. I have everything. Jessica likes to hum while she's eating. I that's... do. I hum while I'm eating. That's a that's that's a the thing. Okay. Then we have almond milk. Oh, so that was low sodium tamari. Sorry if I'm going too quickly, but that was low sodium tamari. You could also use like liquid aminos, low sodium soy sauce, that kind of stuff. And then I just have a my little beaker here with uh, a quarter cup of unsweetened original almond milk. Don't get the vanilla or anything like That'll that. That'll really mess up That'll the recipe. Really not taste good. Um, this is just unsweetened original almond milk. And then um, Brian's getting the basil together, and we're gonna do pepper. It says pepper to taste, so yeah, I don't know. it's just added in there. You I'm know, gonna add, add some an extra freshly level. cracked black pepper. If you want to add in some, uh, just like a dash of cayenne, you can do that as well. Although the uh, the basil itself will usually be fairly peppery and have have a bit of a kick to it. I, I would say everything. that's probably so, good enough. I'm gonna... Except for the yeah, the basil Oop. going in there. Flying leaf. So it's pretty basic. You know, I think the you said the peas kind of help replace since you don't have like olive oil and that kind yes, of stuff. Yes, because you know, uh, olive olive oil is kind of an an essential ingredient in normal pesto, uh, and the peas really balance out the pepperiness of the basil as well as give you an extra layer of creaminess and an extra layer of sweetness as well. So, so then we are just going to turn that sucker turn on. This on. It's gonna get really loud, probably. <laughs> That's not loud at all. Uh, so yeah. It's noisy. Who is, who is doing that again where they're making? So Brian, Brian suggests that you. Oh, so I already had one from the. Go potatoes. ahead and like wipe it down. Every yeah, you want to push everything back down again, especially uh, we've done this as a double batch as well, and it is easier to mix, uh, just because everything sort of 
blends together really nicely. But yes, you definitely want to have to, you're definitely gonna have to scrape down the sides uh, a couple of times, probably. So yeah, you just keep going like that, but with the magic of TV. <laughs> no worry, we're gonna eat all of this, I promise. I always wanted to do like a, a cooking show where it's just like, and I happen to have this in the oven ready to go. <laughs> like, so we happen to have some pesto that has I've been made before um, that is ready to go. So this is, this. you can see it's it's really creamy. It thickens up a little bit. It thickens bit. up a little bit. This we've made yesterday and it's it actually, it tastes really good by itself. But if you take and add it to these potatoes. Go ahead and just. Mm, get the potatoes in. We're just eating for us. We're fine. We can use our hands. Yeah. So if you put the potatoes in a bowl, ah, actually fun. we ate uh, a giant bowl together yesterday as we were, we yeah, were that doing, was, that was like testing our the meal. final recipe. So yes, take your little roasted up potatoes and then add in your pesto and you can heat up the, the pesto. You can heat up it all together if you want, or you can just, um, and you may have extra pesto. You don't need to use all of it, but we basically just like to kind of mix it up all together, toss it all together, toss it all together and then um, eat it like that. But I also like to just for fanciness, extra fanciness, I like to add like just a little bit of fresh parsley. This is me pretending to be on Food Network here. <laughs> That looks amazing. So just add a little bit of fresh parsley and then there you go. You have pesto roasted potatoes. Now, of course you could, is Scout eating a potato? No, there's Grab no potato Scout, So we can show Scout. Scouty, I know you like dogs. Oh, I love dogs. Are you kidding? This is Scout. This is one of our dogs. This is Scout. Oliver is actually at daycare right now. <laughs> yeah. So we got to go pick him up after we're done here. But this is my little girl. This is I love her to death. How okay. come one dog goes to daycare and one stays well, home? So she Oliver, like Oliver, no, Scott doesn't like daycare, but Oliver can be kind of like annoying. I mean, he's my baby, but uh, we decided that we were like, well, I'll take, we'll take him to daycare while we're doing this so that we didn't have to like chase. It can be a lot trying to chase down two dogs while filming. Mm -hmm. um, when we do the videos, we sometimes we'll have like a little like dog okay. intermission and then it speeds forward. Uh, but we figured since we were doing this live, we would, we would, uh, we would let, Ollie go to what we call his happy place, which is his daycare. Um, but yeah, so roasted pesto potatoes. Do you want to try it out a bite? Yeah, where's my fork? Oh, sorry. Thank you. I have this, look at this tiniest little fork just for Brian. <laughs> I'm just a giant with a normal sized mm. fork instead. Those look See, amazing. I actually like it with the, mm. the hot potatoes and then the cold pesto. It all kind of comes together. If you get that on my laptop, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Yep. I'm but so yeah, glad the, you guys didn't get so sick of potatoes that you're not eating them because exactly. <laughs> it took us a year, but we finally got we back. We finally to got them. back to them. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so this is just a little quick thing that Brian put together. But yeah. And that was my lunch, and she, I gave her a taste of it, and she was like, "That's really good." Yeah, I had one bite, and I was like, "Yep, this is this is good." <laughs> not bad for something I threw together one day. Yeah, peas peas are a great idea. Not to mention they keep it nice and green too, so it's not yeah. like you don't have anything else in them. Yes. I wouldn't mind trying it with uh, with maybe some beans or something sometime just to see. But I guess peas are are I mean they're green beans, but kind of they're lentils. But like right, All right, legumes. I don't something. Know. What are peas? <laughs> I, yeah, peas, peas are technically legumes. Maria says, yeah. do you taste the peas? I don't taste not the really. Peas. No, um, you there's just an underlying sweetness to to the pesto, uh, which is really nice. Uh, but no, it doesn't have like a very strong pea flavor because the basil yeah. is just so strong mm -hmm. uh, that it it will overpower practically everything except for the the parsley, which you know will will have its own distinct flavor whenever you bite into that. But this has honestly become one of my favorite things. Like I made this like three or four times that week, oh, like alone. Once I figured it out, They're like just this same dish, the same recipe, just potatoes with this lovely uh, pesto on there and. Yeah, I think the I think a couple times I even uh, chopped up some sun dried tomatoes and mixed that in there as well. That turned out amazing. Uh, I mean, like there, there's so many different varieties of things that you can do with this recipe. That I mean, you're not just restricted to this. You can do a bunch of stuff. But I really do want to try it with pasta. I have yet to do that because I keep eating with potatoes instead. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet it would also be good on zucchini noodles too. 
Mm, oh yeah, yeah and we true. get out the uh, the little zoodler thingamabob yeah. that we had. And, uh, you could even do like a bake, just a baked potato, and then use it as the topping too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been great. I know you have to go pick up your dog, so thank you guys so much for doing this. The recipe was great. I love getting to know you better. Yeah, and, and everybody loves you, so this is great. We could talk for a good while yeah, longer. Well, I know that. <laughs> yeah, well, I we know definitely. That. We were definitely, well, I was nervous. I'm, I always get nervous about these kind of things, but I was like, I, I'm really glad we did it. And it was really fun getting to chat with you and, and everything like that. So well, David, keep up the good work and thanks for all you're doing to inspire people and for getting back up every time you have a minor transgression. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody. <laughs>